morning. There are a plethora of announcements, but before we get to those, who all is visiting today? <laughs> oh, here they are. What, what we're after is who you are, where you're from, and how you heard about us, and then you can tell us your most embarrassing moment. <laughs> Hi. Oh, it'll get worse. <laughs> Hi, my name's Sandy Fink, and I live in Fairfield Glade, been here almost four years, and I'm in the Grief Share program here, so got to know your pastor and others from the church, and uh, happy to be here today visiting. We're oh, most embarrassing year. No, no, I was kidding. We're not. <laughs> I don't know you well enough yet. Yes, right. <laughs> later, later. Hi, my name is Jill Markison. Um, I'm originally from Arlington Heights, Illinois. Just moved out. Really? Palatine. Wow. Okay. Um, just moved here in February. Um, I live with my friend Sandy. We've been friends for many years back in Illinois, um, and I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Welcome. We're glad you are here. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else? All right. So you got to know me, and you still came anyway. How about that? Not good for you. You're a persistent soul. That's, okay, let's see. David Dindy's comedy show. We're, we're being the good neighbor policy for our Presbyterian brothers and sisters. We're providing them space. We went to, he did one show yesterday. It is excellent. So if you, if you have an opportunity, the show's at 3 o'clock. And let me tell you, one of the questions you're going to be asked while there are 66 books in the Bible, be re yeah, 39 is the Old Testament answer. It's a little embarrassing. I know it's close. It's somewhere around. <laughs> so I'm just telling you, it's 39. I'll be ready. So don't fall into the same mistake I did. Uh, I know we have an Esther dinner announcement. Yes. Yes? Where's the microphone so everybody can hear her? Oh, uh, you know, no, the people at home want to know. Can you all hear me? Yes, Good. I've tried to talk to a lot of you this morning. There's an Esther dinner scheduled for Sunday, April 28th from 5 to 7. I did have an interesting question. Somebody asked me, what's the purpose of them? So let me just tell you, the purpose of them is sort of, one, to get to know the women who are in the church with us, that whole sisterhood. And the other is to kind of do, do a discussion over one or two of the women in the Bible and how their life might apply or not to our life. And so really it's just an evening of sort of socializing but with a focus. And um, dinner's provided. You don't have to do that. If you want to make a donation, cool. If you don't, cool. We don't really care. It's just a <laughs> come as you are. Don't bring your men. And... Um, <laughs> And it'll be a good night. Thank you. And there's a sign-up board in the hall. Please sign up if you're going to be coming. Excellent. Thank you. All right, two, uh, two more. Um, I, I was informed that the communion assistant lay reader list needs some help and that there's this rumor going around that you have to be of exceptional uh, holiness or exceptional exceptional brilliance in order to do this let me tell you I started when I was a little kid you don't have to be exceptionally holy nor do you have to be exceptionally brilliant you'll be just fine so the point this like uh, you heard the point of doing this is because we want lay participation within the service so think of it as a stewardship opportunity not not some scary thing that we're all going to sit and say well you mispronounced that word because chances are we don't know how to pronounce it either, so it'll be okay. All right, something new, and I know that's a scary word. Uh, during communion, we're going to sing hymns if, quietly, uh, if you wish, or you can sit and just listen to your brothers and sisters. But it, it, it is a meditative aid. that we I've done this in, in a lot of other congregations, so it's not something new agey and scary. If you want to sing, sing quietly. If you want to sit and listen, sit and listen. But it, it is a way to deepen what happens within the communion experience. At the end of service, again, we will, we're learning uh, liturgical practice. We will turn. You follow the cross. As the cross comes in or goes out, 
you will, you will turn, and so the ending of the service is printed for you on the, your announcement sheet. So if you don't have an announcement sheet, wave your arm vigorously, and we will, we will get you one. Uh, announcements from the body for the sake of good order, anything of which we need to be made aware. If not, I would invite you to prepare your hearts and minds for worship as we listen to our call to worship. as it is brought into worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter, and our joy. Look, here is water. Immersed in the promises of baptism, we give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep. Water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. At the the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you open the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. 
Look, here is water. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit is with you all. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
holy and righteous God, you are the author of life. You adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Acts. Peter addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this, or why do you stare at us, as though by our own power or piety we, made, we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. Dear mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you love illusions and seek after? that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. The Lord will hear me when I call. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Hear us sing, who will show us any good? Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart, more than when grain and wine abound. In peace I will lie down and sleep, for you, O Lord, make me rest secure. A reading from 1 John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord.
according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus himself stood among the disciples, said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled, terrified. They thought they were seeing a ghost. Jesus said to them, Why are you frightened? Why do doubts arise in your heart? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. And he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that Messiah is to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in His name to all nations, beginning with Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Well, if you are like me, when the rains descend, it is time to curl up with a good book. Everybody's got their own choices. For some, it's literary fiction. For others, mysteries or thrillers or horrors and on and on and on. However, our gospel reading for today suggests another genre that is still popular today. The ghost story. In the reading, the disciples have gathered in Jerusalem Jesus pops up and says, Yo, how's it going? No, he doesn't say that. He says, Peace be with you. But the effect is still the same. They are startled. They are terrified. And they thought they were seeing a ghost. Ghosts down through millennia have fascinated us. Ghosts occupy a, such a prominent place in our culture, in the English-speaking world, that the Oxford University Press published a book of scary ghost stories entitled The Oxford University Book of Scary Ghost Stories. <laughs> well, in South Carolina, we don't mess with those people from Oxford University. We have our own ghost stories. This one dates back... To 1822. This is your Ferris Bueller moment. Anyone? Anyone? The Gray Man. I was ra I heard this from the time I was a little kid. The Gray Man roams the beach at Pauley's Island ahead of major storms. It seems that a woman claims to have seen the ghost before Hurricane Hazel in 1954. Another sighting occurred prior to Hurricane Hugo in 89, and the most recent appearance ahead of Hurricane Florence in 2018. All there, there are variations to the legend. The basic story is the same. A young man who had been at sea for a long time is traveling to see his beloved. Being somewhat anxious, he decides to cut through the swamp. Bad plan. As the sun begins to set, the horse becomes bogged down in the mud and the muck and the mire and throws the rider into the mud and the muck and the mire, which then sucks him down, ending his life. Devastated by the news of her beloved's death, the young woman begins taking long walks along the beach. And during one of those long walks, she encounters, dun, 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 the gray man. As she got closer, she looks at this gray man 
And why, that looks a lot like her beloved. He simply warns her, points her, go, go away, leave for a storm is coming. So the woman does. She races home and tells everybody at home, okay, hit the road. We got to go. Everybody else's house is destroyed except for hers, yes. And according to local legend, the gray man continues to roam Pauly's Island ahead of large storms. Okay, back to St. Luke. Another ghost story. These guys know dead. They are not medical people, but they understand dead. They know that someone who has been crucified doesn't simply show up willy-nilly at table a few days after the execution, ready to dine on fried tilapia and couscous primavera. The Jesus whom they followed is dead. The Jesus whom they loved is dead. They watched him die. So dead, in fact, that the guards did not break the legs to hasten suffocation. So dead, in fact, that Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus take away the dead body and put it in a garden tomb. What's striking about the reading in Luke's subsequent recording of the events is Jesus' insistence and persistence in dispelling this notion that he's a ghost. A ghost story told to entertain and to frighten children. I think my parents told me so we wouldn't go outside on the beach in the storm, but that's a different problem. Jesus goes to great pains to demonstrate, I am not a ghost. Look at my hands. Look at my feet. Why would you do that? Because there is a direct connection to the human who had walked and talked with them prior to the resurrection. There is a continuity of personal identity. It is me, myself, touch me and see for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And then out come the hands and the feet. At the core... The questions which swirl around us are questions of reality versus fantasy. What's the point of these appearances? What difference does it make if there's a real presence in the Eucharist? I'm glad you asked because I'm going to explain it to you. This is not a story told to entertain the masses or to frighten children into correct behavior. This is a proclamation so staggering that the world continues to wrestle with it, to try to understand it. My letter of call, the letter of call for all of us who occupy the office of word and sacrament, calls out two primary responsibilities. Now, there are a whole host of second-tier ones, like open the wall and unlock the door and all of that kind of stuff. But the primary ones are twofold. Proclaim the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, the one crucified, risen, and living, and administer the sacraments, baptism and Holy Communion, both of which are tied to a resurrected and living Jesus. Jesus described as the Agnus Dei, the Lamb of God, the sacrifice put forward to prepare the breach of sin. The Agnus Dei is a metaphor that every Jewish boy and girl in the first century would recognize, right? There's got to be atonement for the sins committed. A ram in a thicket or a sacrificial lamb, something is needed, something now provided in the person of Jesus Christ. The same Jesus who instructs the disciples and us, take the bread, this is my body. Take the wine, 
This is my blood. I am present. With apologies to Thomas Aquinas, we don't have to explain how. We celebrate the gift, the grace, and the mystery that is anchored in the truthfulness of Almighty God. The Bible stresses the divinity and the humanity of Christ. Human, not sort of human or looking like us or appearing to be flesh und blood. The writer of Hebrews says it this way. Jesus had to become like his brothers and sisters in every respect. I say it this way. What he was, we are. What he is, we shall be. A real life body with a connection to what came before. Now, personally, I'd like to be a little taller and a little thinner, but we don't get to make these choices. But there is a there there. It's not some nethery, shadowy, Casper the Ghost kind of existence. It's not a story told to entertain or frighten children. Into the resurrected life and death, we are baptized. We are joined. We are grafted. We are placed into community. This is the Jesus we encounter at table and font. It's not a ghost story told to entertain or to frighten children. It's a proclamation of resurrection and a promise of new life. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. church, we confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, 
True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of gospel, of good news. God, our Holy One, you feed our deepest hungers. We share the holy meal that is the body and blood of Jesus given for us. Lead us to share all that we have and find in generosity abundant life. God of grace. God, our Creator, you bring forth all life on earth. Calm storms. Bring water to parched places and protect the climate that this planet would sustain life in all its variety. God of grace. God, our Savior, you offer wisdom and guidance beyond all human knowledge. Instruct lawmakers, judges, and elected officials to make decisions grounded in your justice and care for all people. God of grace. God, our elder, you care for all your children. Encourage those who are in time of transition, facing the loss of old ways and routines and anticipating change. Guide those who journey in grief, hope, and uncertainty. Especially we pray for Betty A, Joe B, Jude D, John G, Richard Q, Dwayne S, Paul S. God of grace, God our center, you bring all people together in you. Help us to remember our identity and purpose of our ministry. Move us to love neighbor as ourself and to share in beloved community. God of grace. We pray for this nation, our President Joseph Biden, Tennessee's Governor Bill Lee and his wife Maria, Cumberland County Mayor Alan Foster, and all first responders, God of grace, God, our resting place. Your son Jesus promised that we are held in your love forever. We remember our beloved brothers and sisters who have died, who reside now in the church triumphant. As we remember and share their love, comfort those who mourn. God of grace. Brothers and sisters, I invite you to lift silently now before God's throne of grace those cares, concerns, and celebrations which you carry in your hearts this morning. As we gather in this place in the safety and security of Fairfield Glade, we are mindful 
of a world which in many places does not know security or peace. We pray for the nation of Israel. We pray for the Palestinians caught in crossfire. We pray for the nation of Ukraine, the nation of Haiti. We pray for the wider Middle East, that warfare which is so prevalent may be replaced by your shalom. Into your hands, merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray silently and aloud, and especially those prayers when we struggle to find language, trusting all to your abiding love, a love made tangible and known through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. If you are able, I invite you to stand. Peace of the risen Christ is with you always. I invite you to share that peace with one another.
gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord is with you. And also with you. Lift up your Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and the sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting. Your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. 
Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out upon all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life. And as community gathered here, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us and then send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit with your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. We pray together the prayer which our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Come and eat at God's table. You may be seated. communing in your pews, I remind you that the words you hear spoken at this altar are spoken also for you. The body of Christ is given for you, and the blood of Christ is shed for you. If you come forward, we are communing this day by intinction. There is wine, the red color on the right of the chalice. The grape juice is white, and on the left, I invite you to come forward at the direction of the ushers. The table is, in fact, ready.
Shepherd and God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. God of resurrection, power of the Christ, of unending joy and the spirit of Easter hope, bless you now and forever. Amen. Lutheran Church, how do we understand ourselves? Christ Lutheran Church is a caring community of the baptized people of God, 
saved by the gift of grace, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and sent into the world to share the good news of God's love. Hallelujah. Go in peace. Rejoice and be glad.